So folks, the burden of Damascus is about to be fulfilled. But at what time frame? Isaiah 17 and 1, the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. It shall be a ruinous heap. What that mean? Well, Hezbollah, Syria, Damascus is in Syria. The U.S. already started bombing them because of the so-called attacks on our U U.S. military bases over that way. There was an announcement that was supposed to be made today by their leader that says, well, if you don't do a ceasefire, we are going to get involved and we're going to bring our full brigade into this battle. Well, the U.S. government, see why this is very important, the U.S. government already made announcement on Halloween that they are using direct energy weapons. Okay? They are using direct energy weapons. So, so a, a ruinous heap. The Pentagon said that. Now, the United States is not the only country with direct energy weapons. Russia, Russia has them. China has them. But let's be clear. The devil has them. That's who they belong to. But God takes his hand off of things and allows certain things to be done. In a time where the children of Israel were constantly doing things and God sold them into the hands of the enemy and allowed terrible things to happen to them as a way of punishment because of their transgressions. But when, but when God brought them back into their land in 1948, and in Psalms 48, he, he tells you that. Okay, Psalms 45 through 48 are critical because they also talk about a time where God ended the war, the last war, WW2. He broke the ships. He stopped the arrows. He allowed Israel to come back into their land to where they would never be driven out again until the end of the world. But Damascus being a ruinous heap, ladies and gentlemen, how do you think that's gonna happen? How could you do it without really getting involved with military boots on the ground? You know how they do it? The same way they did Maui. Oh yeah. The cities of Aurora are forsaken, they shall be for flocks, meaning that the wildlife will lay down in the places where you once had a concrete jungle. And they shall lay down and none shall be afraid. Now again, I find it strange. Uh, you, you, can, you can say whatever you want to say about them elk and deer in, in, in Colorado. Oh, this is the time of year that they always do things, you know. But I challenge you to think a little deeper. Okay. Colorado, there's a lot going on over there right now. And militarily, there's a lot going on in Colorado right now. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. There's a lot going on. Now, people say that happens all the time, but not in that mass number. Not since these doomsday planes been running back and forth from Colorado to D.C. The man almost knows something getting ready to jump. Yellowstone is percolating. Okay. It says the fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom of the, and from the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria. A remnant means uh, what's left, okay, of what used to be. That's all remnant means, folks. So verse three says, the fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria. There shall be, they shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, says the Lord of hosts. That means they'll be defeated. Israel will be of, of glory. Thus says the Lord. This is what I'm talking about, folks. When people get upset about what's going on in this world, you know, say, you're not reading the Bible, you don't know. Okay? It's simply because you're not studying the word of Yah. All these people have a problem with what's going on. I don't have a problem with what's going on because the Bible says so. The word of God said he would do it. 
These are prophetic times that we're living in, folks, and people need to understand that. Look at verse 4. And in that day, okay, what does that mean, folks? In that day. That means that this is a future event that the prophet Isaiah is speaking about. In that day, it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. Now, I take that as saying Israel will also lose a large part of their humanity. His flesh shall wax thin. Okay. His flesh. Who is his? Jacob. Who is Jacob? The people, the tribes of Israel. The fatness. Okay. They're going to lose a large percentage of their population. Due to this war, Gaza, Damascus. This is Isaiah 17 and 1. Okay. Then get into verse 5. And it shall be. This is future. Right when Damascus is being destroyed, Israel is going to start losing a lot of folks to this war. That means bombs going to be dropping everywhere. It shall be as when the harvest man gather the corn and the reap and the reapeth and reapeth the, arm, the ears with his arm. It's going to come down with his arm and grab up the harvest. And it shall be as he that gather the ears in the valley of Rephraim. Then verse 6 says there's a left behind. Yet the gleaning shall be left in it. As the shaking of an olive tree. Two or three berries in the top of the uttermost part of the bough. Four or five in the, in the outmost fruitful branches thereof. Thus says the Lord of Israel. Okay. Who are you always talking about? It's going to be a rapture. Who you at? Well, <coughs> there's coming a harvest, folks. Right about when we see Damascus being destroyed. And why would the Bible say that Israel <coughs> will wax lean and the fatness is going to be? Because if we see these, uh, uh, the Syrian army, if we see Iran get involved, this is the beginning. This is not a WW3A and then there's going to be a WW3B. No, this is it, folks. This is it. We are at the precipice of a harvest. The Bible says in that day. We are living in that day. That day is now. Hope y'all got your spiritual ears on this morning. Because he didn't do it for nothing. Hope you got your spiritual ears on. Okay? Soon and very soon, man. We keep our eyes focused on Gaza and Damascus. When we start seeing Syria getting involved and Hezbollah and all of that because Damascus is in that is that nation state. We've already started bombing Syria. <clears throat> They're calling for a ceasefire, but that's not going to happen. That's just some old political jargon. You just, just, just save that rhetoric and get right on in the battle. Because the Bible says that y'all going to get in the battle. Because y'all going to be utterly destroyed. Right along with Damascus. He says, I will destroy the inhabitants thereof. I know that's hard for folks to understand. But that's the word of God, folks. That's the word. There's a political machine behind all of this. But, again, he who now lets will let until he is taken out of the way. Then that wicked will be revealed. Right now, he is not taken out of the way because we're still here. We're still here, folks. That means you still got time. But well, who knows when that time is going to run out.